You know, I would say making fun of the 2016 anime of Berserk is beating a dead horse, but I've seen what dead horses do in this show. I think we are all ready to see a showdown between Guts and Griffith, because we really haven't seen it since Guts walked out on the band of the hall. Or if you want to score some brownie points, the kind of fight that happens in volume 3 of the manga. Every time we get remotely close to something of a fight, someone always gets in the way. You see Guts gaining more knowledge and figuring out new ways to take on demons or apostles, and every time something remotely close to a fight is about to break out, somebody always gets in the way. Thus breaking the question, what would even happen between these two? We've seen Guts gain more knowledge and figure out new ways to take on demons and apostles, and even gaining the berserker armor, growing stronger with each fight and taking on bigger and badder enemies quicker and faster. And then you have Griffith who is already on a level of a god, seeming untouchable physically and metaphorically, mind you. And if you ask any berserk fan, which I have did, who would win in the 1v1, people would probably look at it and go, Griffith. So the question asks, what are Guts' chances and odds against Griffith? First, we need to take a look at what Guts has in terms of strength, skills, and weapons. And then before that, let's take a quick glance at Griffith. Now I'm going to go ahead and have to say spoiler warning for the manga of this show. I will only be going over the things that Guts and Griffith have acquired, but that's still a kind of interesting read, so if you have not read the manga, please don't go anywhere I need your views. Now that that's out of the way. One of Griffith's greatest strengths right now, other than having a giant apostle army, is, well, being a fucking god hand. For real, we have not seen the limit of his power yet. We have not even seen him struggle towards certain enemies. It's almost his old self, but a totally off the Richter scale in comparison. And just when he thought maybe he doesn't even have his powers in this world, he transforms in the fight against Ginagishka. Ginagishka. <laughs> God damn it. You see him transform in his fight against Ganishka, meaning he retained all of his powers he had during the eclipse. We also see him just straight up take out Guts without even touching him. Griffith is unmeasurable in his potential and strength and power, but we've never seen Guts go up against Griffith at full power. He's always been exhausted during some kind of fight. Now, let's take a quick look at Guts. Gutsu has been driven off one thing and one thing alone, rage and revenge. Well, revenge fuels his rage, so let's just go ahead and say rage. Now, I'm just going to say that his rage manifested itself into an evil shadow dog, which seems to be the most logical explanation for that side of him, and it takes control of his berserker armor and even himself sometimes. This is one of the main fuels for his strength. Out of all the things Guts has, this is probably the most common slash bland thing you can say about him, without going into the juicy details. So we'll just leave it at this is Guts, and he'll probably find some way to pull out of anything by getting pissed. Let's talk about two things that is really going to help Guts against Griffith, which ironically is one of his greatest weaknesses towards Griffith. Now one is his signature Dragon Slayer sword, and the other is the Mark of Sacrifice. Now I know, Dakota, this is Griffith we're talking about. A giant sword isn't really going to do much to him, right? Well, you would be correct if this was actually a normal sword. Ever since getting the Dragon Slayer and being marked with a brand of sacrifice, the brand of sacrifice, ever getting branded with a mark of sacrifice, I said that backwards a lot, looks like Guts has been wearing off small armies of monsters every night, using the Dragon Slayer to take them out. And on top of that, a few apostles adding to your badass count record. The sword is as tall as he is, standing at about six and a half feet, and it's been speculated the way anywhere between 200 to 600 pounds. I will let somebody else do the math for me. Now, a sword that size is always impressive, and it's been the only weapon he's been able to use to kill certain monsters. But there is something way more going on here. It is pointed out to us by Shirake that the sword has developed some sort of odd, as if it was being forged by every enemy it slays. Imagine those stories that you heard about the most powerful weapons being created after only killing so many people, or even Full Metal Alchemist, where the Philosopher's Stone can only be created by sacrificing so many people. Now, I know that deals with more of equivalent exchange, but you catch my drift. For something that powerful took a lot of deaths to even up to it. Moral of the story is that Guts' sword is now starting to give off sort of its own energy. Without knowing it, Guts is forming his own type of magical weapon, I would go ahead and call it. It's a weapon no one knows can be greater than just a huge chunk of iron. Or maybe it'll just stay a frying pan. Now, talking about the Berserker armor was probably the first thing you thought up when I brought this topic up. Yes, the Berserker armor, formerly owned by Skull Knight, is now in the possession of Guts. And he seems to have found the way to try and keep it under control. Although it seems he's still having very heavy aftermaths after using it. The Berserker armor is a far solution from fighting Griffith. It's not even really an answer. It's just a nice tool to get him there. And hey, if he can use it correctly, or maybe in one final battle, yeah, maybe. You can move more unpredictably and swing a sword faster and harder. I mean, this armor literally digs itself into the bones to stabilize it when it's broken. 
and you also don't even care about pain. On top of that, it fixes itself, but there are consequences. This armor has even been known to reduce muscle mass of Guts when he first used it, which I don't think this was addressed in the anime because, well, I mean, looking at him, he already looked like a drained, muscleless guy. God, I just, I just really hate that show. Now this next thing is a very important detail, it's not even really about Guts, but it's about Griffith, and that is his actual body. When Griffith was reborn into the world, there were two factors that played in, the living behilt and the fetus baby, that is Casca and Guts' child. Yeah, I know, I think the movies kind of just skipped over that whole thing. Uh, quick, quickly, uh, the sum things up, there's this waterfall scene in the beginning of the third movie that which deserves its own video because there are so many ups and downs to that, that was just a lot of to take in from just that one scene. Anyways, it resulted in Guts and Casca banging pretty hardcore for about two or three times if you keep it up in the manga, and Casca became pregnant. Now after the eclipse when Griffith violated her and shot his seed into her, it messed up the child causing Casca to have a miscarriage, Guts wanting to kill it immediately, Casca protecting it, and it disappeared. I guess in demon fetus years this is enough to develop a consciousness and start to follow Guts and Costco around in order to protect them, warning them about various things. This happened all the way up until Griffith's rebirth. And on the way up, the living Behult built Behelt, Behelt, Behelt. On the way up to becoming the egg, the living Behelet eats the fetus as it just looked pitiful, and they wanted to die together, I guess? This fabricating itself with Griffith when he was born. Not just its body, but even its mind. We see as soon as Griffith's born, he showed feelings and long interaction with Casca. Not because this was Griffith, but he said it was because of lingering feelings of his body. I mean, would Griffith even really care? He goes up on a mountain to talk to Rickert, and when Guts shows up ready to fight, he was just like, oh, are you still mad about the whole Eclipse thing, dude? Maybe being fused with his body will help Guts out. On top of that, we still have very many mysteries to take care of and explain, and maybe will come into play. I mean, just take a look at the other mysteries. The mysterious boy that pops up that's been speculated to be the spirit of Guts and Casca's child. There's also Skull Knight, who we haven't seen 1v1 Griffith either. And if that happens, I'd be so... Oh, excited. Plus, he made a weapon out of behelots. Um, <laughs> excuse me? You took the one single item that connects worlds, took a few hundred of them, and then crafted it and molded it into a sword? Skull Knight, just stop being so fucking cool. So let's break down right now, can Guts defeat Griffith? Probably not, if we're being completely honest here. I really believe if Guts were to win against Griffith, it would be completely one-sided. Maybe a few surprises here and there, but completely one-sided. But that is thus far in the story, and this story has no signs of stopping. There's so much to gain and learn. I think maybe in a few years, more than likely, which this manga is probably going to be taking, seeing as how the fact this series is taking another hiatus until winter, we will see Guts acquire the skills to take out Griffith. And there will be a fight to go down not only in history for its most anticipated, but also for its most most planned out build up in storytelling history. Or, you know, just another eclipse scene where you kill everybody I goddamn care about. Honestly, I think I'd probably kill my.